Hello. Welcome back. Day two. Good morning. Day or afternoon or evening. <laughs> yeah, depending on where you are. It's morning for us. Yes. We're in San Francisco. My name is Ellie. I'm here with Elizabeth Goodspeed. Hi. For day two of our graphic design on Photoshop stream. Um, let us know in the chat if you were watching yesterday, if today is your first day. Um, let us know where you're watching from. If it's morning or lunch yeah. or evening. That's always fun to know. Um, yeah, say Cornwall. hi. Cool. We have Phil from Cornwall, freezing Cornwall. Nor. Uh, hello. Utah. Hi, Jerry. Thanks for saying hi, guys, and thanks for watching. Um, we're going to have fun today. We're going to yeah. keep working on a food zine. Uh, called Food. It's called, called F-U-D-E. -D -E. <laughs> yeah, we had I we don't had remember who debate. suggested it yesterday, but someone yeah. genius yes. really came up with that. There was really good name suggestions yeah. yesterday. It was hard to choose. Yeah. So it's kind of overwhelming. Very overwhelming. But that's okay. <laughs> we made a choice. You made a choice. Um, so we're going to keep pushing through with that, yeah. and it's going to be fun. And I think today, since yesterday we went a little wild on the collaging, yeah. um, I think it would be nice today, especially since the morning challenge was typography focused, mm -hmm. to maybe try and do a little bit of typesetting. Yeah. So. It's going to be great. It we'll looks that. like we have someone from Sonoma. That's not too far from us. Virginia, Florida, Portugal, the Netherlands, Florida. Thank you guys so much for joining. Um, as always, today we are going to have um, a sticker giveaway in about 30 minutes, so make sure that you are staying active in the chat and you'll have a chance to win 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. It's a pretty good deal. And then we can pull up the schedule for today and see what else is going on. So earlier today there was another daily creative challenge with Kathleen. Um, all about type, working with type in Photoshop, um, which is pretty fun. And then now we're live until 11.30 with Elizabeth. At 11.30 will be the XD Daily Creative Challenge. And then at noon will be um, a collaboration with Andrew and Brent. And I just saw a little bit of it yesterday, and it seemed like it was a really fun time. So you definitely want to stick some around. green screen magic? There was some, like, crazy disappearing acts going on and all sorts of things. So... Definitely um, stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, do you want to go over who you are and yeah, reintroduce I'll, yourself I'll for like anyone a, who missed a yesterday? Quick, um, intro okay. for anyone who wasn't here yesterday. Um, and I think. If you want to go over to my screen, I have her website up. There we go. Um, my name is Elizabeth Goodspeed. <laughs> I live in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I'm a graphic designer who works at a design firm or a small design studio called Rowan Co. Um, in the past, I've also been at uh, Pentagram. Um, I specialize in branding and identity. Um, also do a lot of editorial. And my sort of uh, love is really for archival graphic design, um, ephemera, any type of design outside of sort of the conventional canon um, in either contemporary practice or Western practice. So really exciting. So fun. Um, if you haven't had a chance to go through Elizabeth's site, you should go take a look. Um, ElizabethGoodspeed.com and one thing that um, she showed us yesterday, if you click over to her <laughs> archiving, um, she shared a whole list of resources. Yeah, it's on my page um, on right my website here. under archiving. Um, definitely, as I said, I'm really passionate about open source material, so this is sort of a list that I've made for everybody to um, do this themselves. If they want to, you know, make a jello collage or, ooh, oh. this <laughs> little chair event, um, do a jello collage or really, you know, find some stuff to look at that's maybe not on Pinterest. Yes, so definitely go check it out. Um, you'll find lots of inspiration there, and it's a really, really, really good resource. Yeah, so. lots of lo lots to look through. And yes. definitely please contribute if you, if you find yourself doing this, because I, I would love to see what you guys all find. Cool. Well, just as a reminder, um, our daily creative challenge, um, Elizabeth will be reviewing those. Um, and the challenge for today is to, um, you can see it over here, use text tools to design a stylized logo for your favorite book. So make sure you uh, work on that during the stream and submit. You can watch the replay if you missed it and you want to see Kathleen demo that. Um, that is available. So we'll be reviewing those in a little bit. Amazing. And we can jump in. Yeah, let's Ready? do it. Okay. So this is where we left off yesterday. I had um, these great references. Um, and I have my document here. We have it. Oh, sorry. It's very fast here. We have it called food. I actually <laughs> thought it might also be fun since the creative challenge today was around um, 
doing some tax treatment, I thought it might be yeah. interesting to do some of that on our logo here, mm -hmm. which for now is um, just the souvenir typeface. It might be interesting to see if we want to customize it a little bit. Yeah. Um, and we have some kooky collages happening. We have my favorite. Donut <laughs> we have a donut man. <laughs> we have some uh, cow cream situation happening. Yeah. Um, some falling grapefruits. My personal favorite, the the beef. The burger. The beef a spread. Beautiful burger. Um, and some uh, a meat ice cream cone. <laughs> All the things we need for a healthy, balanced meal. Uh, so yeah, I was thinking it might be interesting to sort of contrast some of the more visual stuff that we've been doing to show some typesetting. So maybe we'll start with that, just to warm up for the morning. Sounds good. So I was thinking it might be interesting to use these collages that we've made as um, like breaker pages, almost sort of like, not chapter headings, but maybe you show the image and then you show the recipe. Mm -hmm. um, so I have, I pulled in this recipe for a burger. Yeah. It's not a Whopper, unfortunately. <laughs> or it wasn't a Whopper, it was a Big Mac? A Big Mac. I think it was a Big Mac. These are not, I'm not a know. huge uh, fast food <laughs> consumer, so I'm not sure. But, um, so this is just a regular burger, but I think it'll hopefully be. Okay, but it has goat cheese on it, so that sounds It does, it's amazing. like a fancy burger. Yeah, that sounds incredible. It has goat cheese, it has some uh, adobo, big fan. Yes, um, wow. So we have that, and I, as I said, I usually like to use my pasteboard to sort of throw um, my text in just so mm -hmm. I have it all sort of clean without mm -hmm. any editing. Um, and we haven't really talked about um, what typefaces we're gonna use for this. We have this souvenir, which is obviously very like display focused. Mm -hmm. um, and we were using this zipper here, but we haven't really done any um, heavy duty text. So I think it's nice to do that. Um, I use a um, font management service, which I really like. Um, and what's nice about it is you can um, text, like you can type text into it. I'm gonna see what it and will preview, look like. And mm preview, -hmm. um, which is great. What is this? There's a lot of these. They're called, um, <laughs> what are they called? Pangrams. It's called a pangram when you have a sentence that has all the letters mm -hmm. of the alphabet. So I sometimes like to look at this when I'm trying to decide what typefaces I want to use. See what all the letters will look like. Yes. And, you know, not end up with a weird G or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so we're using souvenir for this right now for food. Um, so food, F-U-D-E. So maybe yeah. it would be nice to use a souvenir, but we should probably find maybe a nice sans that would pair with it. Mm -hmm. I like to group my typefaces by um, like quality. And yeah, font base is great because it is um, free, but you can also upgrade. I, I pay for the upgrade, I think, because it is it's really nice. Um, so I actually have made categories here of things like, oh, script typefaces that I like, or, you know, Sans families. So mm -hmm. this is one, I have a bunch of like Sans families that I like. Um, so maybe we'll make a new collection here. Um, and let me see, we can pull yeah. in a few yeah. that are fun. Um, I love typefaces. I could look at typefaces <laughs> all day. When you're pairing, so say you have souvenir and you're trying to pair it with something, what's something that you would look for? when you're creating a pairing? So the, the, a great first thing to look for is just the X height. Mm -hmm. It's a sort of like easy way to match things. Um, so we can write, you know, meals, type this in souvenir. Um, and it's nice to see this has a pretty, these have um, pretty t medium to tall X heights, I think. So I would look for something that was a bit bigger. Um, and mostly that often feels like anything where the lowercase feels pretty big compared to the uppercase is mm -hmm. we do it. This typeface also you'll see has um, ascenders that are a bit taller than the caps mm -hmm. just by a bit, but so that's also something else to look for. You don't want to have a typeface where the capital letters are much taller than the ascenders paired with this. Yeah. Um, so do some- Do you want to explain X height and ascender? Oh yes, I'm sorry. Might, uh, yes, no. absolutely. <laughs> no. So um, the X height is uh, just that. It's the height of the X. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of an easy way to tell how tall a typeface is. Yeah. Um, just and it matches. So for example, if you were to put this with um, another typeface that has, I'm trying to think of something that's a very hot, tall X height. So a low X height um, would be a typeface called Mrs. Eves, has, has quite mm -hmm. a low X height. So if you look, you can see how much lower, even though this yeah. is a smaller typeface overall, but even if you were to match it in size, it's still, you have to, it's still smaller. Yeah. Um, than, than the X height of the souvenir. So it wouldn't probably be a great match, or if you're gonna typeset it, you're gonna have to keep making the Mrs. Eves larger, and right. it's always gonna feel a bit imbalanced. Mm 
Um, and there are some typefaces that have really large X heights, really small. Um, and I was saying with the ascender, descender, that's something where this is the, the ascender is the top of the L, mm -hmm. um, and then the descender would be something like a J or a G. Mm -hmm. Anything that goes below. Anything that goes below yeah. that baseline. Um, oh, great. On Adobe Fonts, you can sort by X height, which is probably very helpful. That's very helpful. Um, and I'd say at the same time, don't be afraid to pair things that don't have the same X height. If sure. you love two things that go together, you can find a way to make it work. It just might mean, for example, you always have to set one at 11 and set one at 12. You're gonna be like adjusting more maybe than yeah. if they are already the same. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and I was saying with the ascenders, it just is kind of nice sometimes to have ascenders that have the same um, kind of quality in them. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it just gives it a sense of balance and pairing. Yeah, so, absolutely. That's good. Okay, so we're using souvenir for this one. Um, so what were we gonna pair it with? I was looking at, um, I've been really loving this typeface Fabrica recently. Ooh, that's beautiful. Um, it's just, let me see. I've, I never really know what it's gonna look like until, until I compare them, but that, that looks not so far up. But see, this has a much, much higher, actually the difference yeah. between the M and the E is really um, small. Whereas the difference between the M and the E on the souvenir is much more dramatic. So you end up with, these probably won't be a great match, unfortunately, okay. as much as I love Fabrica. Um, what else is in here? Gotham, people love Gotham. Mm -hmm. Mabry is another typeface I've been loving recently. Um, Mabry uh, was originally designed for um, Nasty Gal. Oh, um, yeah. And it was recently made public for okay. other use. That happens a lot with typefaces. Mm -hmm. Companies will commission them and then once they sort of um, finish their um, sort of run, they're able to release them to the public. Yeah, that's really um, cool. I'm forgetting the foundry that makes Mabry, but, oh, it's Colophon, I think. Great type foundry. Um, but also another thing that's nice, if you actually look at these, they pair really well to me in the sense that if you look at the A's, mm -hmm. um, you can see. Sorry, I can get have. really geeky on type <laughs> design stuff here. These are called. Um, I'm like trying to get out of the way so you yeah, can no, see it. Yeah, no, it's okay. Here, I'll move it. There you go. These Great. are called. Thanks these are that. called um, <laughs> double story A's, which means that they have like a top and then a bottom, um, as opposed to an A like this. I think Helvetica has. A, no, Helvetica has that. Um, would be Futura. Futura has what's called a single story A. It's just one sort of circle with yeah. a line. Yeah. Same with that's a single story G versus a double story G is the one that has the sort of like circle and then the drop and then the other circle. Yeah. So it's another thing that can be nice to match across typefaces if you're trying to pair, just trying to find sort of commonalities. So not only do these both have um, double story A's, but they both have a kind of like round shape happening. It's, yeah. it's very like, almost like a circle coming off. Like if you look at that Helvetica A that was just in there, it almost kind of like swoops. Yeah out, um, whereas the double story A's have a much more kind of like bulbous, cute kind of energy, which I think is also really good for what we're doing, which is a sort of retro publication. Yeah. So I'm going to go with the Mabry. Let's Great. do it. Um, Great so I, tips. Thank you. Yeah. That's really I, helpful. I love talking about this stuff. And um, there's so much information on the internet about type, and, mm -hmm. and I think it's a balance. It's really good to know these sort of... Um, basics when yeah. you're getting started. At the same time, I also do really encourage people to play. Don't feel constricted by hmm. those rules because sometimes two typefaces just don't seem like they should go together. And they do. But for some reason yeah. they do. And yeah. Or the specific project. Or yes, absolutely. And they don't have to always, I'm trying to do something that has something um, that sort of combines matches a little bit, mm -hmm. but you can also do stuff that conflicts. Like, and sure. you can play with that kind of contrast mm -hmm. a bit more. For example, mm -hmm. like, I'm wondering if it might be fun to throw in like a monospace type in this, I'll show you. If you don't know what a mono is, we'll get there, I promise. <laughs> um, okay, we need a name for this burger. It is a. It is kind of a Big Mac. It but is I, kind of a Big Mac. But it's a goat cheese Big Mac. Okay, name <laughs> suggestions once again. We're asking for your help. Um, burger, okay, we'll, we'll write burger for okay. now and everyone can think Let on it. Let us know. So I like to, um, when I'm defining you know, a type hierarchy, so what typefaces I'm gonna use, I try to figure out my um, headline. So right now our headline is this souvenir. We're using um, light. Actually, I think we're using um, medium. And then big goat. I like that one. Big goat. Big goat. Perfect. The goat Should it be nurse. big goat burger or just big goat? I kind of like big goat. Like Maybe. Big Mac, big goat. We could also just make this goat a goat meat burger. That's true. Does that feel a little is like, that... is that wrong to mix 
I feel like that is always go a little cheese bit. Go cheese, go it's like mother me. and baby in one. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> um, so I like to define my um, headline. So we have, we're using souvenir. Um, and then generally the other things, if we're just a small um, thing like that, we're gonna do probably a subhead, which is like the second sort of smallest headline. Um, we're gonna do a body copy. Um, and maybe sometimes I like to add a caption. So I'm just gonna write this out. Caption, body, and subhead. Justin, uh, GOAT is an acronym for greatest oh, of all yes, time. So it it like oh, yes, it is. So it be like GOAT, but it's also GOAT cheese. I forgot about that. That's, That's like great. a great, it's a great one. So That was so quick, wow. Um, GOAT meat is very good in my opinion. I think it's- I've never had it. It's very good. You get it in a lot of, um, like I think, West Indian cooking. Okay. Um, which my neighborhood in Crown Heights has a lot of um, like mm. Caribbean food. Yeah. Um, also, that's it's very good. But um, so one, if you're feeling like a little unsure on how to start laying out these styles, one thing you can definitely do if you're just trying to get started is play with just bold. So have different weights. So we want to use the Mabry, but maybe we can use the um, we can use the light version of the souvenir. Um, somewhere as well. So we're gonna maybe use the Mabry for our subhead. I think that looks really nice together. Yeah, it does. I'm using the regular for this because it'll probably show up, you know, maybe around this size, which you just don't want it to compete, but you want mm -hmm. it to be sort of visible. Oh, also this is, maybe this is a little, a trick. I, you can scale, when you scale a text box using just shift, um, like you would do in Photoshop, you, can do you just the text box. it just makes the text box bigger. Mm -hmm. The text doesn't actually get bigger. If it's Shift Command on a Mac, I don't know on a PC, but it's great. You can scale the text box and the type um, simultaneously, Very which is useful. how much I pretty much always do it. Um, and then for our body, so for body copy, it's nice to do something that is um, a bit read more readable. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend using something like the um, souvenir for body copy. Yeah, you can fill the you can actually fill this with placeholder text mm -hmm. um, in InDesign, which is great. Placeholder text is also called lorem ipsum. It's like fake. I think it's maybe from a Latin poem. I think it's yeah. I think it's Latin. Um, it, it's. I know it's. I think it might be fake Latin though. Oh, is it? I'm not sure. I don't know. But um, it's. But if you imagine this really small, trying to read this, it's not super super readable. So it might be nice to do something that's like a little more um, uh, just. Sometimes a serif is good because the the theory is that the lines at the mm -hmm. bottom of a serif, um, so these are the serifs, the little like feet, they sort of bring your eye across the page mm -hmm. a bit. Make it more legible. Yeah, so yeah. conventionally that's what people usually use for um, body copy. So maybe. Tim confirmed it's fake Latin. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anyone here ever eats at Chipotle, but I find it very funny that they have, their takeout bags uh -huh. have Handwritten lorem ipsum, really? Like it's like hand lettered in a really funky style. Yeah. But it's lorem ipsum, and I always wonder if that was like some graphic design joke, or if they hand lettered it in lorem ipsum, huh. and then they never changed, changed it. it. Wait, sometimes it has a story on it though. But also, there's like a back of the bag on oh, the side has like a lorem side, ipsum panel. I've never looked at that. Um, I always thought lorem ipsum would be a really good drag name because <laughs> it sounds kind of like Lauren, like Lauren, Lauren. ipsum. Yeah. Like a. That's funny. <laughs> Just saying. I love it. Um, yes, John Doe is the is the American. I'm sorry, I keep reading comments aloud without actually reading it's them. Okay. Someone said that Lauren if Lorem Ipsum sounded like a first and last name. Yes, John Doe. Um, and I said it's yeah, it's kind of like a John Doe. <laughs> um, okay, so let's look at some serifs and maybe yeah, why don't we use uh, Adobe Fonts to find a serif because I know yes. that they have really convenient sorting of um, you can sort just by mm -hmm. serif. Let's see. Okay. Browse fonts. They have a pretty good selection. Oh, I'm not signed too. in. Oh, no. Well, it's because okay. I'm going to have to like, go through this whole thing. It's all right. Let's see. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can find one and I'll just have it in my font. Already. Okay. So, okay. Serif. Um, so, yeah, it's nice. You can search. Oh, that's so helpful. You can do tall mm -hmm. X height, low X height. Contrast. That's basically like um, how thick and thin, the thick and thins are. <laughs> With weight, um, oh, this is so funky, I love this. Okay, great, and it even has recommendations for paragraphs. Cool, let's see what they have. What what do we have here? Freight, I love, freight is a great mm -hmm. typeface. Caslon is another classic. 
Um, I think we're going with something a bit funkier, a bit round. Um, let's see. What's nice here? Oh, Tim with the facts. The Lorem Ipsum bags are actually hand lettered and intentional. Yeah, it I is. I that. guess it is an Easter egg. Yeah. I assumed it. I assumed it had to be. Yeah. Um, Unless intentional, they just like completely but missed I, it and made it like, oh no, we forgot to put our whatever yeah. on there. I just find it very funny. A big mistake. Like it's a great because I feel like I'm probably one of a very small yeah. percentage of the population um, that would see it and be like, "This is Lorem Ipsum," yeah. whereas other people probably think it's like an old Latin quote. That is so funny. I don't think I need to inspect my bags yeah. closer. I guess that's. I'm all about inspecting bags closely. <laughs> um, maybe we'll go with the with the freight. Well, let me let me check it. Let me see if I have. I have to figure out how to install this. I know this is very easy, I just happen to not be logged in, which makes it less easy. Ooh, Philip is asking if there's any difference between saying there typeface There is a difference. So, <laughs> I love this stuff. So, um, typeface is, um, so back when you had metal type and stuff was being printed, you know, by hand with yeah. lead type, which is how it used to be done, um, you, each, each font is what it was called, um, had a different size, right? So you couldn't just buy Garamond, you had to buy real Each physical size. objects. You had to buy yeah. Garamond size 12 bolt. Garamond size 15, you know, regular. Um, and you'd get a whole case of type, which is also where lowercase and uppercase comes mm -hmm. from, because the um, capital letters were stored in the uppercase and the non-capitals are stored in the lowercase. Um, but those are called fonts. So a specific set of like letters on a specific size and boldness is a font. So like Adobe, uh, Adobe Garamond Bold is a font. Mm -hmm. Garamond is a typeface. Yeah. The typeface refers to the whole collection mm -hmm. um, of that sort of design, uh, whereas the font is like the particular um, specs of the size and the weight and the boldness. Yes. Oh, see, Tim wrote that much quicker than I yes. said it. But <laughs> I gave you all the background of lead type. Cool, uh, yes. So I find it very interesting. So if you want to sound fancier, when in doubt, always say typeface. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, you mean typeface. Right. But also, I think generally, like, I'm all about um, low level of snobbery. <laughs> so I, I would never, like, be mad if someone like, said... Like, correct someone. It's, yeah. That is a font. Yeah, we all know what yeah. people mean when they say font. Yes. It's just a helpful thing. Yeah, font family is what Bridget says. Let's see. You guys have more type questions. This is the time to ask them. Yeah, I know, I know a lot about... You're the type expert here, so <laughs> keep them coming. It's um, fun. Yes. Oh, see, I, I, I know I'm, I'm trying to show um, how helpful Adobe Fonts is, and I have not turned on my thing, so I might have to resort back to font base, unfortunately. Um, but everyone else who is logged in should use their <laughs> Adobe Fonts. Yeah, it is very, very helpful. It is. I use it um, on my work computer all the time. I'm just yeah. not logged in right now. It's okay. We'll forgive you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, let me see. What would go well with this? Uh, I like, yeah, please hit me with the type questions. Yes. I love answering Keep it coming. type questions. And about five more minutes until chat and win. So Ooh, stay in the get chat, your, ask your questions, and you'll have a chance to win stickers. So win win yeah. information and stickers. <laughs> Kerwin's asking if you've ever created your own typeface. I have, I've created a few. Um, I did a, a type design program at Cooper Union um, that was focused on type design mm -hmm. only. Um, it was pretty intense. It was Six weeks, six days a week, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Wow. <laughs> so it was just it's a 24-7 type. Um, I really love it. I think it's just such a fun thing. You learn so much mm -hmm. about working with type by making your own type. Yeah. It's like how you learn about what food tastes good if you are, you know, cooking. Um, so I, I think it's really nice to get that experience, and I would definitely encourage everybody to give it a shot. Um, a great start is doing what people were talking about this morning, which is if you... So the way you design a typeface, I know I'm kind of going on a little tangent here, but the way you design a typeface is by, you know, the same way you do a pen tool. You just draw all these points, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of sort of best practices about how to draw those points. So a great way to get started is if you outline any type, for example, here it is, we have food, I'm outlining that. And now if I go here, I can look at all those points. You can see how this was constructed. So you can see that they put a point, it's hard to see, but at the, um, I hate when that happens when you zoom in and you're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> you can see they put points at the like extreme points of this letter. Yeah. Um, so you can definitely really get a sense of how to mess with um, type design and mess with typography by looking at fonts that already exist. You don't have to take a class. You can just sort of 
self-teach yourself a bit. Um, and, and yeah, try and mess around with stuff. Like see, you sort of have innate sense for how much you can mess with things before mm -hmm. they stop being viewable. And also, if you're gonna shorten the crossbar on the F, you probably wanna shorten it on the E as well. Yeah. Um, so things that like that, sense. finding like balances. And the, the letters most type design starts with are H, O, and N, because mm -hmm. that gives you um, circles, it gives you diagonals, and it gives you uprights. So if you're trying to sort of get started, those are some good letters to, to explore playing with. Cool, thank you. Yeah, I love I love type. Type is like my first love in yeah. design. Um, okay, well now I've gotten here and I'm messing with the logo. <laughs> it's the best. So here I'm raising this, giving it a kind of, that gives it a kind of um, a little more art deco energy. Yeah, it's fun. To have that really tall. Mm -hmm. um, I am very pro Comic Sans. I actually <laughs> think there's a, it's a big, someone asked what do I um, think about people that like Comic Sans. Yeah. I think it's a big conspiracy. Um, to, to shame people, and I think my stepmom is a kindergarten teacher and she uses Comic Sans and the kids love it, and I yeah. think that's fine. And I think, as I said, I'm very low snobbery. I'm like, if you, there are a lot of great situations. It's a very playful font. Yeah, you know, playful. yeah, I wouldn't use it for something like, you know, a legal document, <laughs> yes. but I think every font, a time every font has its home. <laughs> um, and they, every font deserves love yes. from somebody. <laughs> Um, someone was asking, I don't think, I can't see the question anymore, um, so I'm not sure who asked it, but someone was asking about um, size and like what would be the smallest size you would use on packaging or something that's gonna be very small. Always print it. I mean, just yeah. like you should always print it. You can't, you can spend all this time looking on the computer trying to figure out what is the right size um, and drive yourself crazy. If you print it out and you mm -hmm. hand it to someone, you say, can you read this? Yeah. If they can read it, you're probably set. I'd also say think about your audience. Like if you're looking at, um, you know, like someone, if it's gonna be a wide range of audiences, mm -hmm. you you wanna make sure you include people who have lower vision, maybe yeah. a bit older. Um, I'm always erring on the side of a little larger if you aren't sure. Um, but yes, uh, definitely like play around with it and, yeah. and explore. But I, I mean, generally like anything below five points is probably, yeah. but, but again, if you're looking at a like pill bottle, if they're putting like legalese information on the bottom, yes, you don't small. need it to be yeah. huge. Well, different fonts can go to different sizes Yes, too. and that's a great thing about yeah. X height. If you are using something that has a really high X height, it's mm -hmm. a lot more readable mm -hmm. um, at a small size, whereas something like the Mrs. Eves that we were looking at would be a lot harder yeah. um, to see if it yeah. was smaller. Yeah. Oh, you have one minute left for your one sticker. One minute left. Let's see. Okay, I feel like I've just been, I'm going into the like void here of just looking at typefaces. I should just decide one that we're gonna use for this. Okay. Um, let me see. We're looking for a serif. What's, I see it's funny, I'm, I'm very like, I, I love display typefaces, which is to say typefaces that look really crazy. So I'm very bad at choosing like practical typefaces. Yeah. Um, we could use Arnheim. Let me see has a little bit of that roundness. Mm -hmm. It has these kind of um, wedge-shaped serifs, you know, like rather than being just like slabs, they're kind of nice um, tapering. And you have these nice, it's called a um, little bit of a ball terminal when the end of the A has this sort of like big circle. So maybe we'll just use this for now so we can not have to spend more time on Keep it. Keep going. <laughs> and I'm gonna like, avoid the caption Okay. Now. Oh, perfect timing. It is time for chat and win. So jump in the chat, um, tell us something about yourself, um, something fun, and- Your favorite typeface. Your favorite typeface. <laughs> Good call, and we'll be right back. We are back. Let us know your favorite typeface. Um, we are waiting to hear who's gonna win our stickers. Railway, that's a great one. Railway. Lust there's a, is a script. Poppins. Poppins is lovely. Poppins mm -hmm. is, a, I think, a Google font, so it's free. Juniper. That's nice. Futura has great A's. Wow, people have a lot of feelings about typefaces. This yes. is great. Um, this is the right stream for it. Yeah. Diffused, I don't know diffused. I don't know diffuse. Script is nice. I think script is um, you have to you have to be advanced yeah. to know how to use script well. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. badly used script. It's like my my least favorite thing is oh we have a I think we, we have, have a, winner. a winner. Loris, you will get a message on Behance about how you can redeem your stickers, 
and you'll get 100 free stickers. And if you didn't win, um, you can go to, do we have our link? There we go, stickermeal.com slash adobelive19. You can get 10 stickers for a dollar. Um, test them out, play around, do some cool typeface on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, letters are great. Yes. Oh, Babas New is another nice one. I love it's like very condensed. Um, I forgot what I was saying because um, that wasn't important. Script. Script. Oh, when you see sometimes people will yeah. track out script so that the um, like the things that connect it aren't connecting it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. That's my like least favorite thing in the world. And you see it on so many signs. People just love to do it. Um, yeah. Big, big no-no in my opinion. Um, okay, great. So we have some subhead stuff set. Let's start running this through. Perfect. Um, I'm, I know this is supposed to be uh, Photoshop focused, but this is kind of becoming an InDesign moment. I hope that's okay. Um, we'll go with it. So the first part of this recipe has you, um, so I guess we have to do the um, ingredients, that's what they're called. Yes. Um, so I would probably do that in the body copy because okay. it's sort of a small detail up top. Um, and then we're distinguishing it by, Oh, it has a slaw. It has a spicy slaw. Um, blood orange vinegar. That sounds amazing. And we're doing this in the Arnheim. I'd say probably the normal is fine. Mm -hmm. So I actually think this might be a case that we want to add another smaller subhead, maybe, okay. because I think this one's going to be too big. Mm -hmm. um, this one would probably, either we want to make this smaller or we want to say something like ingredients, and sure. then there's a section that says, you know, Recipe, yeah, but you know maybe we'll just make it smaller. I think it would be nice to have. I like the Mabry here. It just gets a little bigger. Oh, Tim is asking. So, what is this process called? Typesetting. Typesetting. Yes, I. I mean it, that comes from the mm -hmm. like classic um, typesetting, as in when you were actually like setting lead type. Yeah. Um, I still think it's called typesetting just because that's the way you do it. Yeah. But, um, that's what it's been called. So it's been called, yeah, but it, it is called typesetting. Yeah. So I want to add a, and I'm going to open up some of my fun type panels here. Keep the type questions coming because yeah. it's really fun. <laughs> and don't forget, in about an hour of 55 minutes or so, um, Elizabeth will be reviewing the Daily Creative Challenge, which is very related to this. Yes. Um, it's working to type in. It's inspired in me. Photoshop. <laughs> um, and um, you'll be playing with type in your. Um, the title of your favorite book. And you can watch the replay for that. Kathleen did a really good demo this morning. Um, if you want to see um, all her tips and tricks and um, yeah, make sure you submit. We want to see what you guys make. Yeah. So one thing that's great here is you see we're using a recipe. So, and it has these like one thirds, et cetera. Um, it's great if you can switch those to proper fractions. Um, usually, so if you open the glyphs panel, um, which is gonna sort of show you all the, all the different type stuff that's mm -hmm. available. You can sub in like proper fractions for all of these. The only problem is some type, some um, fonts don't, or typefaces rather, <laughs> don't <laughs> offer certain, they often always have like the three fourths, one fourth, one half, but some of them don't have a um, one third. So there are ways to sort of work around it. Um, I haven't done this in a very long time. Let's see if I can still remember okay, it. Let's see. Um, if you use this superscript uh -huh. here and then the subscript, you can sort of sometimes, mm, you can sort of sometimes make up your own. But since we talked about outlining type yesterday, maybe we can even um, do this this way, which is to just outline this guy. <laughs> and we can just combine the two. Sure. That works for me. So there's our one four. Well, Keen is asking um, if you have any books for learning about type and editorial design or websites. <sighs> yes, um, I am trying to remember the famous book that is about type design or typesetting. And it has like all this information on line length and I, my brain keeps saying Strunk and White, which is the editorial, um, which is about grammar. Yeah. Um, let me, remember the name of this okay. book, and then I will tell you. Um, I would say Type Wolf, everyone sort of knows mm -hmm. about it, but I do think it's a great resource yeah. um, for... They do pairings and stuff too, right? Mm -hmm. Like they'll have a font and then, um, or a typeface, and you can... <laughs> See, it's hard, huh? It's so hard, you get in the habit, and um, they'll show recommended pairings, and they'll show examples and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah. 
As I said, I also love, you know, I'm an archive fan, so often I look at just how old stuff is doing it. Um, one of my type design teachers um, in college used to have us take um, newspaper spreads, mm, and we'd cool. have to um, put tracing paper over them. This is Doug Scott, if anyone has ever heard of him. He taught at a bunch of schools. Um, you would have to take a ruler and find, make all the grids that it was using, yeah. um, and then you'd have to identify all the typefaces and roughly figure out the size. Um, and it was really helpful to just sort of get familiar yeah. and, and seeing how it's done in best practices is often um, the easiest way to figure out how to do it best. Mm -hmm. So you can see I've just made my own one third fraction here. There you go. So no reason to have to mess with it. It'll be a little annoying, obviously, because now if we change stuff around, we'll have sure. to make sure. I also just sort of nudged this cup to the right so I had the same amount of spacing with my other things. Um, Judy's asking, what was the name of the application that you were using for the typefaces? It's called FontBase. FontBase. Um, great. Okay. So there we go. We have that. And then two thirds. Wow. See, and this is one might argue if we're having this problem of not being able to find these fractions, it might also be a case to use uh, a different typeface, yeah. which you can also do. Sometimes you certain typefaces are just really helpful for certain features like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just for an example, I'm curious actually if the Mabry has, okay, Mabry also only has hmm. one fourth, one half, three fourths. Come on, type designers, give us more, <laughs> give us more fractions. I love the glyphs panel though, because sometimes you'll realize, you'll discover like that that's a whole fun set of like, like random, weird, like that's cool, yeah. Weird glyphs. So this is the, I think this is the logo for the Type Foundry. They have like Cute lots of fun heart. things in here, you know, so you can definitely, um, it's a fun place to play. You can find some good stuff. That's really that's fun. Um, but we're just gonna we're just gonna keep on with our um, slightly ineffective <laughs> Arnheim here, just to not backtrack. Just workarounds all over the place. Yes, I, a lot of graphic design is workarounds. Um, just gonna move the two thirds down here, and now we need to get a little tiny two. Um, okay, we're gonna put in this, where's the two thirds? You can also sort here by like, you know, numbers, mm -hmm. and it'll, it's easier to find rather than um, having to look through the whole panel. So outlining, I'm just deleting the other parts, and then I'm dropping the two here for not just one cup of blood orange, but two cups of blood orange. <laughs> Sometimes I like to lock. If I have to grab something that's layered, I'll just lock the back one. It's Command L on a Mac, just so I don't mm -hmm. accidentally grab the thing I'm trying to not grab. Um, and I made this a little larger, so I'll probably just make it a little bigger to match. Too big. <laughs> okay, great. So we have our burger, and I'm gonna unlock it. Um, another thing I would do is um, I like to have a space sometimes between like the subhead and yeah. the copy. I'm pretty sure you can do that here in the paragraph panel. If you see, it adds, well, this is crazy because there's a space between everything. So there's a difference between a hard return yeah. and a soft return. A mm -hmm. soft return is done with a shift enter and a hard return is done with an enter. Mm -hmm. So right now we have a hard return on everything, which is means that when we add spacing between the paragraphs, it adds it between everything, which obviously looks crazy. So we only want to have a soft return between these, so I'll just go back in and soft return these. Um, and I'm which sure- Which means that you're holding shift. Yeah, it means I'm just holding mm -hmm. shift as I do these. Um, this is the kind of thing where like someone's gonna chime in on chat and be like, there's a much easier way to do this. Yeah. Um, oh, my former intern is in the chat. Aww. I also think my dad is in this chat. Everyone's in this chat. Everyone's Everyone I know here. is in this chat. Um, so I tend to just do that. So now look, if we add this little space, it just adds it between mm -hmm. the um, subhead. And, and it's nice just to type and sync. I just think it's it, it helps break up the information a bit better Yeah. Um, if you have a little bit more space there. Kind of makes it more distinct. Um, and of course, now we have to move all of our little funky extras down mm -hmm. a bit. Um, cool. Oh, we lost oh. our two. Okay. Here we go. Great. And now Spicy Slaw is gonna just, and you can use the eyedropper tool to just grab it usually. Yes, such a useful tool. Well, sometimes when you, it shows, a, see it shows a little T 
It's oh. very hard to see. It's so <laughs> tiny right now. But if you look over under the R of burger, yeah. it like the eyedropper turns into like a little T. Mm -hmm. So it's grabbing the font and not grab or the typefaces. Yeah. Sorry. And not grabbing the color of the page, right? Because you could you yes. get the color of the page. Um, a funny thing that Adobe does, which I really like, um, is that when you have outline type, it's like slightly darker looking mm -hmm. than live type. So don't be distracted by that. I think if you were to like preview it, it will look the same yeah. on screen. It's just that it is going to look a bit um, bigger when it's this way. So now that we have this whole block, I said this yesterday, I love to do this, which is the little like, the little, yep. Um, I personally, I hate, this is a really, because this is a personal project, I don't have to follow this recipe perfectly, so I'm just going to take off yeah. our chopped canned tomatoes because it's too long. It's too big. We don't need that. Um, and now since this is done, I'm going to just group it, and now we can just move it around as a block. Perfect. Okay, so here is our recipe. Beautiful. So now we have to actually write the regular recipe. <laughs> um, so... Sometimes when I'm doing something that's numbered, um, I like to make two text boxes. One that has the numbers right aligned and one that has the mm. text left aligned. I just find it easiest in order, especially if you go into double digit numbers. Right. Um, it's a good way to sort of avoid having to mess with um, too much stuff. So what I mean, this will make more sense, I promise. So again, I'm doing like a hard return on these ones because I want to add space. I think these should be hard returned. So that's just regular enter. Um, I'm also going to add a few more numbers just to show us what we're talking about here. Um, ooh, you paint on the glaze. <laughs> Fancy. Um, Camille's asking if you know of a good liquid type. Um, liquid type is very cool right now. I know. You know. I would say tutorial wise, I would just look into anything that uses the like 3D um, feature. That's mm -hmm. the best way I think to do it. Also, if you're really trying to get fancy, like I, I'm not familiar with 3D programs, but I think yeah. that's almost like the best way to do that kind of stuff. But you can use a lot of in Photoshop, you can either use the 3D element or you mm -hmm. can use um, any of the regular sort of layer effects mm -hmm. tend to be kind of nice. You can add that kind of depth. In reality, I think what makes stuff look liquid is if the letter forms themselves, the more like drippy those seem, mm -hmm. the easier it'll be to make it look liquid. Like you can't make Helvetica look liquid. And, yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So that would be my very abstract advice. Um, so again, we're going to do this with our just adding spacing. The reason I like to do this rather than just adding the space myself is it is just a bit more controllable. Mm -hmm. um, this line width length is a little long, so I might recommend that we mm -hmm. move this. Um, so now I'm taking out the numbers. Okay. The other reason I like to do it this way is then I can have the numbers be a different typeface and don't have to worry as much. This is going to look really crazy, I know. Um, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And oh, this is gonna. This is maybe I'm doing this in like an overly complicated way. It's okay. But that's life. That um, is life. <laughs> so right now, this has a paragraph of this guy. Um, but I was saying the issue is, yeah, I made this. I made this uh, complicated because now I need to align these with with this top with the baseline. The mm -hmm. I'm not using a baseline grid because in the amount of time I have with you all. <laughs> it's not worth setting one up, <laughs> in my opinion. As I said yesterday, and which everybody dragged me for, um, I also just like hate working with grids. <laughs> I like to eyeball everything and then retrofit a grid. But if it works for you. Oh yes, please it works use. For you. If you like working with grids, yeah. you should work with grids. No, but I'm saying the same for oh, you. Oh like, yes. If you don't like working with grids, you don't have. It's not. If you can eyeball it, and that's what your preferred method, yes, everyone does it differently. So another here, I'll show you another like really awful trick. Sometimes <laughs> if I want to line stuff up on the baseline, and I'm like, Ugh, I don't want to figure out yeah. what this amount of number is, I literally just select the empty space, like the empty lines, and I'll just edit the tracking. I mean the um, current. Let I mean letting, letting of it <laughs> until it's the right amount of letting yeah. for that space. So in this case, it's ten. <laughs> there you go. And it works. It's like really. It works. Again, not like it's a it's a totally a workaround, but and I will tell you my like I have not met a single graphic designer practicing professionally industry that doesn't use like some of these tips. Yeah. Um, and yeah, normally I would just use a combination of like 
hard return and soft return, but I find that because I've now added in this, like, I have a few different things going on, it's easier for me to just do it this way. But yeah. again, if you have a different workaround, like, there's a million ways to do this. Um, it's just whatever works for you, and depending on how long you want to take to do it. Yeah. That's another thing. For me, since this is like very exploratory, I kind of just want it to be there for um, more sort of just to get the sense of what I'm trying to do. There you go. So, and then what I like too is, because right now the numbers, like if you actually were to look at where these numbers end, like some numbers are sort of thicker. Um, or again, if you think of example where one of them was two, mm -hmm. I prefer to then do this one right aligned. And I find right. that it makes a nicer like the line against alignment the, against that margin. That right there, yeah. Here and there here. Um, yeah. It just looks a bit nicer to me. Um, it's a little easier since we're not using any double digit numbers, but I find it, it just creates a better line. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there we go. So, you know, honestly, this looks like it could probably, mm, could this fit on one page? You know how this could fit on one page. Let's try this. Um, gonna ungroup this guy. Okay. And I'm gonna put this nickel two column, well two column guy. You lost your little two thirds there. I know the <laughs> two thirds vexes me. Um, and then conveniently aligns that guy. Oh, I lost the two. That Instead too. Of, he does not want to. I'm just come gonna. Along. You know what? I'm just gonna. Um, Group it. Yeah, I'm just gonna pathfinder it into yes. one shape. Very smart. Make it easier. Um, Don't let that two roll over you. Did that do it? Why will this not let me? Really, it's like as soon as you have an audience. Oh yeah. It wants everything to act goes up. wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I I haven't really looked at the um chat at all and suddenly everybody's talking about pizza. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'm not sure what's going on, but pizza's a great topic, so everybody likes pizza. Everyone likes pizza. That's not true. Not everybody does, but everybody should. That is true. Um I'm also again a really big fan of just like cutting out copy. Mm -hmm. Additional. I think like good access. graphic, yeah, good graphic designers should like also know how to write a little bit and whatever that means to you. But sure. for example, instead of saying or chipotle edits. pepper and adobo, you could just say adobo chipotle peppers. Mm -hmm. And like, I think people will know what you mean. You don't have to say the goat cheese is sliced either, right? Yeah, because they're going to talk about it. Yeah, anyway. exactly. One log goat cheese. There you go. Adobe chipotle peppers. Okay, so now we have two little columns, which is nice. Perfect. And now we could maybe fit this whole thing on one page. I think. Um, and again, I'm gonna just change this into the Arnheim using normal. I don't wanna do um, magnifying tool because, or not magnifying, um, little dropper. <laughs> um, because otherwise I'll, I'll override all that great, you know, yes. tweaking I just did, which again, I already kind of just lost a mm -hmm. little bit. Because it would eye drop that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, all that time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, it, oh, it just lost a little bit. Okay. There you go. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, cool. There you go. And then maybe it'd be nice to add a little title here on the bottom that just says like steps. Okay. Or something. Yeah. If you wanted to get really fussy, you could probably f spend some time figuring out like, do you want to align this to that? Because, and put the numbers on the left side. Cause it is kind of nice that, um, you know what, why don't we do that? I think it would actually look much nicer. So what I'm gonna do is do exactly what we just did up here. I'm just moving this over here sort of to save time. Moving these here. I'm gonna bring this up. I'm gonna copy this. Sometimes this is like when you're cleaning your room, it looks so much messier before you get started. Uh -huh. um, I'm just moving, I'm doing that same thing where I'm putting like the um, numbers on the left and then the info on the right. Um, and so our info is, Three fourths. Uh, where is this? I lost my I lost my bubble. Oh no. 
Um, okay, three fourths, and then we have our little pesky one third. There he is. I created a monster here. <laughs> three, one, two. And again, this goes to show you can do this in an incredibly messy way, and <laughs> it's fine. And it's not gonna look messy when you're done. Hopefully not. Hopefully. That's the goal. Um, okay. So this is letting of, I'm gonna get rid of our extra space here now that we don't have um, the like up top thing that we need, the mm -hmm. subhead. Um, it's very hard to design and talk at the same time. I keep being yes. like, I'm very good at chatting and then suddenly it's like, when Your you're trying to do, trying when you're trying to do typesetting, it's like, Yes. Left brain, right brain. It's very hard. So, I'm impressed. You're doing very well. Thank you all for bearing with me <laughs> as I try to drive, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Send that to the back. Set my one third. I'm going to lock these guys so I don't have to think about them anymore because <laughs> they're driving me crazy. They are a handful. We should have just changed the recipe and been like, one whole cup of honey. Yeah. Easy. Um, Probably better anyway. Right? Yeah. I think I'm missing a number here. Three fourths cup barbecue sauce, one third cup tomato sauce, three adobo, mm -hmm. chipotle third peppers. What? Oh no, two beef patties and one log of goat cheese. I think two beef patties. I forgot the two beef patties. Yeah. There you go. Kind of twenty-one beef patties. Ingredient. Um, yeah, I, typesetting is like. I love it, but it definitely is one of those things, like of all the graphic design, it takes a little more like brain energy from mm. me because you are, A, it involves more numbers. Yeah. Um, and it just like makes it a bit more cumbersome, especially because I've created a monster for myself by um, adding these like heading setups mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all that, but that's okay. Stone is asking your favorite font site or you could show your favorite um, foundry um, too. I am, I am a big fan of like going to foundries directly. I think yeah. it can be really helpful to get a sense of what's like happening in the industry mm -hmm. and all that. Some of my favorite foundries, I love Klim, K-L-I-M. Um, I love Califan. There's another foundry that's actually a collection of foundries called Village, which is great because it represents a lot of really small um, foundries mm -hmm. that don't have their own website otherwise. Um, if you're not really sure, it's, it's nice to just sort of start looking around and and seeing like nothing against um, you know my fonts or anything, but a lot of the typefaces there are you know maybe a little more old fashioned or not quite as sort of um, current. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's nice to it's sometimes nice to use typefaces that aren't being used in other spots. Yeah. Um, so I would definitely recommend like getting familiar with a foundry that you like and follow you know subscribing mm -hmm. to their newsletter, mm -hmm. and you'll get the things that they're making as they come out and you, you get a real sense of like, for example, Colophon is one that I am using for this, which is the Mabry. They make things that are a little more, um, a little fun. Like, I mean, their their name is Colophon. They are a little playful. They've mm -hmm. done typefaces here. I'm gonna even just pull up Colophon's website. Yeah, let's see. Um, so if you look at their typefaces, you'll see that there's kind of like a, there's Mabry, which there one is. Um, so they, and they have a beautiful website. Yeah. Um, you probably know some of their typefaces. Apersu is one basis. A lot of their stuff is pretty round and friendly. Um, this is a, they have a great script um, called Castle Down, just like a youthful kind of script. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, and, you know, if you just, if you look at all their stuff, it's all a little playful. Mm -hmm. You could use mm -hmm. it to type, you know, body copy, but it has sort of a, maybe there's some that have really round edges. Yeah. They're a little bit, um, sometimes a bit retro. I've always loved this one, Pegs. Never been mm -hmm. able to use it for anything, but I just think it's so fun. It's very fun. So definitely good to sort of start getting familiar. And there's a lot of faces here, and pretty much most type foundries will give you a um, free trial. Yeah. You ask, and it's a really great way if you are trying to get um, comfortable with stuff to, to mm -hmm. test it out, and then you know you can buy the typeface down the road. And, and I also think it's like people type design is a very thankless job. Yes. <laughs> um, so and and I really do think. Um, to supplement, you don't need to buy a ton of typefaces. You have so many f um, available through things like Google Fonts and Adobe Fonts, but a few well-placed, mm -hmm. sort of more bespoke typefaces um, can really help supplement that. So maybe you pair something like a Garamond, a bit more classic with one more modern thing. 
um, from a colophon or yeah. a clim, and it can really bring the whole design sort of up to a sort of higher level, um, which is nice. Just mix it up a bit. Yeah, absolutely. So that's my, that's my two cents. Great advice. <laughs> Um, and maybe, who knows, you'll you'll get into it yourself and want to start designing. I also, and here's a, a weird same, I love to font. Yeah. I still use to font all the time. Defont is fun. Um, I saw a tweet on, on Twitter <laughs> that said, um, it was like, very new designers, welcome to Defont. Like, mid-level designers, do not use Defont. Expert designers, welcome back to Defont. <laughs> and that's like kind of how I feel. It's like I avoided it for a really long time. And yeah. now that I think I'm... Like, I know enough to know how to use those typefaces mm -hmm. well. Um, I am sort of like okay with going back to it, especially for stuff like logo design. Yeah. Um, it can be really fun to, to play with stuff that's like, like there's a typeface I love on Defont that I'm gonna show you called Titania. Um, and if you look, this is a little back end stuff. Yeah. If you look at um, the issue of No Man's Land that I worked on at Pentagram, um, we actually used Titania, a Defont font, in our <laughs> in our uh, like a high level fashion yes, magazine. That's um, great. And I don't know if I have it on here, but we used it for our cover story. Okay. So and nobody would have known that it was a Defont. But that's font. the thing is, you like you used it in the right way, in the right place, the yes. right time. Yeah. Um. I have to, let me see if I can find it. But but yes, if you use it well, and, and also a lot of Defont fonts tend to be a bit, um, oh, there it is. Yeah, <laughs> see, that's really fun. <laughs> tend to be a bit more um, funky and weird, mm -hmm. so you can kind of, like, if you use them in a way, the real thing you have to end up doing is, like, the spacing right. is really bad. Um, yes, definitely ch always check the licensing terms. Mm -hmm. And also if you're mm -hmm. using Defont, you're gonna like, if you use a font from Adobe font, it's gonna be like beautiful. Yes, I think we did end up buying this typeface or like licensing it, um, yes. even that though it was from Defont. But um, it is, a lot of the um, letters are like really poorly spaced and stuff. So you have to make sure that you're like, you will probably have to do a decent amount of tweaking sure. on top of what you're doing. Um, whereas with anything professional, it tends to be a bit nicer, but you can find a lot of great ideas on just sort of funky things to do, ways to play with it. Um, you know, for example, like we did not use the Titania shadow, <laughs> but um, it's fun. And, and I, you know who else actually I think uses this is um, Fouet Magazine uses at least a very similar. That's, yeah, that's really fun. Oh, it's kind of like food, right? It is. <laughs> kind of like us. Hey, look at that. Um, but yeah, no, just definitely like, my point again, just being that like, it's great to try and find resources wherever you can and you don't have to naturally spend a lot of money. Maybe yes. you buy one really nice sort of custom typeface from a great type foundry. Um, mm -hmm. And then you also spend a little bit of time on Adobe fonts and then maybe you have one crazy um, font from Defont yeah. snuck in. Yeah. So you can mess around with it. Someone was asking earlier um, some of the most commonly used typefaces. Um, that is a good question. I'm not really sure I know. I do I do like to use Typewolf for that. Mm -hmm. So Typewolf we were just talking about is, yeah. is a really fantastic, I don't know how, I forget the name of the guy who runs it, um, but it's down here and I want to say his name because he's great. Jeremiah Shoff, he, like, this was his whole business. He posts type, really, you know, really wet helpful. type on websites. Mm -hmm. But something he does that I find really helpful is he has this list, a sort of running list of the most popular fonts on Typewolf, which because they're posting contemporary um, mm -hmm. fonts, you can see what's in use. So for example, Apersu, mm -hmm. most popular font right now, it comes from Califon. Yeah. There it is. So I will say I tend to look at this. Awesome. You were talking about earlier, Futura. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I tend to not use any of these because I think if a lot of if Futura is being used by yeah. if the second most popular and if you go through and look at Apersu for example, if you look at all of the websites that are using it, it's it's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I would say if you're thinking about using Apersu, this is a lot of time. This lot. is a lot of websites using Apersu. Um, so if you're thinking about using Apersu, what I would tend to do sometimes is because he has such great pairings, I'd go up here and say, Oh, what's similar? He also will say the um, closest match on Adobe fonts, yeah, which is really helpful. So if you maybe don't have Apersu mm -hmm. or you can't afford Apersu, you can find something similar. similar. But I would always recommend looking for something similar because if you're using Apersu, 
especially since I am working in branding, mm -hmm. um, it's really important to have typefaces that you can have some ownership over as a yeah. brand, and it's mm -hmm. hard to um, have ownership over something that's used by everybody, 200 other websites, 200 yeah. other brands. So I tend to sort of, if I like a typeface and see that it's very popular, I'll look at like maybe the similar fonts, or I'll say, for example, since I really like going through type foundries, I'll say, okay, Apersu is made by Colophon. I'm gonna look at the rest of their typefaces and maybe I would go with, you know, Basis instead because it's sure. a different um, sans serif, but by the same companies or Fabrique, which we actually looked at earlier, mm -hmm. Mabry, just a way to sort of branch out a bit. Um, but in terms of most popular, I don't know. I think it shifts so much. It's hard to, sure. it's hard to know. I'd also say like, for what project, like, I think there is a really big resurgence right now in exactly what we're using in this project. I think like the 70s are very in and mm -hmm. you're seeing a lot of companies using um, like more sort of retro style yeah. work. Um, Buffy just uh, launched, it's a um, comforter DTC company. They mm -hmm. use, um, not souvenir, maybe they use souvenir, but they use one of the like big bulby type bases. Um, and a lot of places, I could probably list off 10, 15. Right. You know, Chobani is a great example, the yogurt company. Yeah, they just did a whole rebrand. They rebranded two years ago, mm -hmm. and um, it's very retro. Yeah. Uh, great Jones is a cookware company. A lot of places are leaning towards this kind of 70s thing. Mm -hmm. So I tend to think that's, whether you want to do that or not, that is something that's sort of trendy right now, right. Um, as opposed to maybe five, 10 years ago, people were really doing that more like streamlined. Mm -hmm. But if you look at different industries too, like fashion right now, is doing a lot more, like, I mean, people are calling blanding, you know, like Balenciaga, just like streamline their logo. And, and a lot of these um, companies are, are streamlining their mm -hmm. logos to something a bit more sort of minimal, but DTC and um, fashion are, are playing in different worlds. So yeah. hard to yeah. know. Um, okay, what do we call this? Steps. Hey, look, we did it. We typeset this. Look at that. <laughs> All while sharing it only so took, many tips and tricks. <laughs> it only took an hour to typeset one page. Hey, you were talking so much about fonts. I'm surprised that you made yeah, this far. That's very too. impressive. Um, I'm going to also just align this to the bottom of the page. I think it would look nice to do that. Okay. Um, and then this guy, too. I'm going to just group this into one big chunk. Put it here. We have about 25 minutes left until our daily creative challenge. So make sure you can submit um, in the challenge tab, which is right above the chat. Um, you can get all the information there. And the, the challenge for today is to use text tools to um, create a stylized logo for your favorite book. Here we go. Right here. Um, you can submit right here. You can get the starter file. Um, you can watch the replay um, of Kathleen's demo if you missed that, but make sure you submit because Elizabeth will give some really good tips. And I hope so. It's exactly what we're talking about today. <laughs> so it's so perfect. So love to talk about type. Um, yes. I'm also gonna just one thing I realized too. I hyphenation is something that like if you are working with like a big book, mm -hmm. hyphenation is fine. But it's like a recipe, you should generally avoid hyphenation because you don't really have to have it. So there's just a handy little button here. Turns off hyphenation. Um, you can see that it drops some of our text down, so I'm just gonna make the text box a little bigger until we have this where it was. Um, I also like to have sort of even columns, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna just do a soft return on these. For example, this is, I always forget if this is a widow or an orphan. I think it's a widow. It's A is widow it? has no future and an orphan has no past. That's, that's not right. <laughs> I think it's a, well, I don't know. I, oh, I think don't know. it's a widow. But so yeah. I hate, you don't want to have one word alone yes. on a line, either mm -hmm. at the top of a page or at the end of a page. So um, I like to just sort of soft return things until they're a bit more aligned. Mm -hmm. um, or like, this is such a long line and then it has of the glaze, so yes. it's nice to kind of just break it a mm -hmm. bit. Camille's asking if you're gonna add a photograph to this. Probably. Um, I will have to decide what photo. Yeah. Well, because well, because we already have our burger. This is sort right. of this is the burger that we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Um, so we kind of need to decide what. Maybe even like an illustration or something. Yeah, I like, think an um, illustration might be fun. Yeah, to balance it. I talked about this yesterday. I always like to when I'm lining something up to a grid, I'll make it um, the baseline based on the cap height rather than the ascender because I find that it aligns better. I also like to align usually with not the serif because the serif like extends, but actually mm -hmm. manually sort of nudge this until it's aligned with the um, like uh, ascender instead. There you go. 
We did it. Fun. Um, so yeah, maybe I will open my, our big folder. So this is a folder of all these photos and illustrations that you collected that yes. you might want to use for this project. Mm. Or any project. Yeah, or, I mean, I do this for every project. Yeah. This just happened to be the one I pulled together for, for this, 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 this page. Yeah. Um, I think we, I, I don't know what other um, meat illustrations I have here. <laughs> oh, here, this one's kind of fun. <laughs> oh my gosh, how cute. <laughs> um, so maybe we'll use this guy. Is that like a, is that a bowl of baked beans with? I don't really know what's going there? on here. Let's see. I think that's, um, oh, on here? Where? This? Like, okay, that's oh no. definitely, oh, that. uh, I could not tell you what what's, this is. What's this one? That's baked beans oh, yeah, and baked beans. a mm, English muffin, maybe? Makes sense. Hard to tell. Um, yeah, I have a few. I have a few beef. Love it. Beef things in here, um, but I think that one's probably the closest to what we're yeah. doing. I like him. He he looks very pleased with himself. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm gonna say we should get rid of the meats because it's a little self-explanatory <laughs> on this page. So I'm just gonna just. I just. This is what I do. I just do that until it's all gone. <laughs> there you go. One might argue, now I'm gonna crop it, so why bother? But <laughs> I would say, you're right. Um, I'm gonna do levels and just get this white background to be white and the black to be black. Um, Ooh, there you go. And I think so if I can contrast. do this right, I'm gonna see if I can do this. I, I sometimes do this. Um, if you make this a grayscale image, I never like to flatten because I like to keep my layers separate. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna have to probably re-level this. Let's see if this works. So I'm gonna save this in here as Meat Man. I think, and this is not gonna work now because I have to show everybody, but <laughs> often, I believe you can recolor grayscale images in, um, yeah, see? So cool. you can just color that directly instead of doing it yeah. in Photoshop. Um, which can be really nice, it means you don't have to like, if you want to change your color or you want to rely on the swatches that you're already using, mm -hmm. it can be really nice to not have to do that in Photoshop. It just makes the workflow a bit faster. Um, and I'm gonna just like, you know, get this roughly onto the sides so that it works. So yeah, just to repeat, all I did is I just made this a grayscale image. Mm -hmm. And then when you direct select, you know, like double click into the center, you can recolor. With the swatches that you created. Um, this to be whatever color you want. Which is very handy. Oh. <laughs> We're sticking with our food red. So that's our, that's our, um. Meat man. Yeah. <laughs> this is our big goat. There he is. Um, and then this is the prior page that says beef. Though I think now that we're using Mabry, we are using basis, a different colophon typeface. I'm gonna switch these to the Mabry to make it a little more consistent. Do, do, do. Oh, it's right aligned. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I find that to be a very handy tool, that like direct select thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay, so what else do we have in here? We have, we have this guy. We just did our beef recipe. Um, should I do more type or should we do another like collage thing? Ooh, what do you guys think? We have about 20 minutes left, so let us know. All this food is making me very thirsty. Yeah, very these, thirsty. These pretzels are making me thirsty. It's a Seinfeld joke, because we talked about Seinfeld yesterday. Because you're a big Seinfeld fan, not friends. Seinfeld. It's a very niche joke that nobody here will probably get. But if you do, then go you. Um, and just here, you can open up this panel too to see if anyone okay. has um, anything that speaks to them. Um, these illustrations definitely type Type people have really already torn half and half. <laughs> Very helpful. Two for we got collage, two for collage. Three for collage. Um, okay, well maybe we'll do maybe we'll do a collage. Could do more. Des you were talking yesterday about doing more dessert. Like a yeah, real we were gonna dessert. do a dessert. Um, yeah, let's do a dessert. Or you could do lunch. We haven't done lunch either. Oh yeah, hit save. Oh, Tom. <laughs> I also never like to save as, I always save. Savior. My best practices are to do, you do the name of the project, then you do the date. So today is 22nd, mm -hmm. and then I usually like to do a version. So it's version one. Very, very helpful okay. because 
when you work in like a professional design studio, you end up with like tons and tons of versions. And sometimes a client will be like, oh, I actually really preferred the thing you showed us at the last presentation. And to not have saved over it and to have all those as like discrete steps is very, very helpful. So I think if you can start that early with your own work, mm -hmm. it'll help you. And it just, there's no reason you wouldn't want to have more information on when you made something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's very good. Then you kind of have like a, capsule of like yes. all the steps that you've done. And too. sometimes you might like something that you made yeah. in the past and want to go back and find it again mm -hmm. too, which is nice. Um, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it also helps you to avoid that like final, 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 final. <laughs> um, and I also, when it is final, I rather than just saving it as final, I usually archive all my stuff. I love to archive in a folder that says like old versions so that only the newest one is in the you folder. Don't have to scroll through. Yeah, all but they're all versions. there. So yeah. it's just nice. And if you go work in any professional studio, this will be a big part of it. Yeah. I think it's just um it just is something that you will have to do no matter what. So it's funny, this kind of like this is an old thing that I you know has a bit of that energy <laughs> of what we were just looking at today. Um, so it's old, but it almost is so old that it feels yeah. contemporary again. It does. And I love this color. I love that like poppy orange. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and for anyone who wasn't here yesterday, I talked about I like to do my mood boarding using this website called Arena, just because I think it's you can pin um, images, but you can also pin PDFs. You can mm -hmm. pin whole websites. It's very helpful. Um, it's a really great resource, um, and you can also use Behance to make um, yes, we learned that yesterday as well, which I did not know until today. Which is great. Um, okay. Dessert. So we just did some colorizing. Maybe it'd be fun to do some more of that. Um, I love the gradient map tool. <laughs> Big fan. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's find a good dessert image. I liked these sort of oh, like I love that. All those <laughs> roundups of fancy pastries. Breads. Yes. Um, they're very cute. Super cute. I don't know exactly what we do with those, but we could do something like that. Um, I sometimes like, I'm a big fan of like making pairings. So maybe it would be fun to take some of these and see like, take them and put them next to like another object that they resemble. Okay. I don't know, let's see. This will make more sense when I explain it, I promise. So for example, maybe we take, this reminds me of when I'm watching The Great British Bake Off and they're like, "Yes, you're all gonna make a, Genoese fancy and they all know what it is. And everyone's like, oh yes, my mom. Like, my mom used to make these. <laughs> yes. Then again, also last episode I watched, they had to make beignets, and none of them had heard of it. Really? And I was like, beignets, the best. But maybe it's an American thing. Disneyland's. That feels right. Yeah. Are they um, French, right? I, I don't know. They're they're French, but they're um, kind American of like a New French. Orleans. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, so. yeah. That makes sense. So like, what does this? I mean, this one obviously has a kind of moon vibe. This reminds me of like a piece of a tree. Oh, yeah. So I'm gonna do these as like little pairings, I think. Okay. This will make sense, I promise. Okay, <sighs> I can't wait. <laughs> so here's my little guy. I know I'm doing this in like a really, as I said yesterday, sometimes I know there are tools that you can use to do this faster, but I find that sometimes doing it by hand actually gets you like a better shape. There you go. And your trackpad. Um, and I, yeah, I'm doing this all on a trackpad, so. <laughs> Love it. Whatever that, take that as you will. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna just, here's our little guy. So this kind of reminds me of a little piece of bark. Yeah, it kind of does. So I was saying yesterday, I'm like a little, I'm gonna open Flickr. Or you know what would be good? Let's go to do New York Public Library. The New York Public Library has one of the best digital collections um, on the internet. It's on that spreadsheet that I sent, but, um, and a great thing too, they have this show only public domain button up here. Oh, that's great. So you can know that you're using stuff that is free to be used. You can also sort by topic. So I'm gonna look mm -hmm. under trees. <laughs> um, so Maria's asking if you took any of those photos with a camera or phone and you did not um, take those photos. I scanned a lot of them myself yes. and then a lot of them I found on the internet, but on places like this, so from archives, mm -hmm. um, Public archives on the internet or in person, um, Flickr, the spreadsheet that I have to share with you all, which I think we pulled up yesterday, but I'll pull it up right now, um, is this is my spreadsheet. So pretty much most, I'd say 70% of those images that are on there were sourced from 
website. some of these websites. So you can get to this um, spreadsheet if you go on Elizabeth's website, um, which is elizabethgoodspeed.com. It there me. You go and click on archiving. And it's right, here. right there. Very useful. I could post the direct link, but I want to force you to look at my website. Yes, and you should go look at her website because it's beautiful. And very fun. I love the colors. Yeah, it's, it's very unique. Um, I actually showed up to work the other day wearing like an outfit in these exact colors, yes. like a neon green shirt and brown pants. And I was like, why do I like this palette so much? And I opened my website and was like, oh, oh yeah. life imitates art. Um, so yeah, a lot of those sources are here. Um, so like New York Public Library is in here under institutions. Um, but yeah, it's great stuff. So our New York Public Library, um, we're going to look up, we're looking up trees. Okay. The Wi-Fi is maybe not loading these, but these are probably all pictures of trees, I assume. And I even went into the topic, there trees. You go. Um, this one has a kind of like bark, like quality. Oh, we're getting a few. Oh, maybe. Um, ooh, that one actually that feels like. That looks very similar. Petrified wood. I love petrified wood, though apparently there's a there's a petrified wood forest. Petrified wood is like wood that's been replaced with um, minerals such mm -hmm. that it looks like wood, but it's actually like rock hard. You'll see yeah. it if you go to like a natural history museum. Yeah. Um, and apparently there's one natural, I mean, petrified wood forest in the US. I think it's somewhere in the um, like deserty area, Utah or Arizona, um, where apparently if you steal the petrified wood, you'll be cursed with bad luck forever. No. And there are like so many stories of people will take a piece of this wood and then they'll like mail it back two years later and be like, I got divorced oh, and no. like my dog died and it was all because I took this wood. Oh, how sad. But the moral story is don't steal petrified wood. There you go. Um, it's if you loading. take anything away from today. If you take anything away from today, it's never <laughs> steal petrified forget. wood. Um, it's loading. Sorry, this okay. is very slow, but you're getting all these great stories on Petrified yes. Wood. And you have 11 minutes to submit. For oh, the yes. I would challenge. love to see anybody's type explorations. I love Yes, type. I love that it's book covers, too. I think book covers are so fun um, and fun to do your own interpretation of a book that you love. So yes. make sure you submit. Um, yes, I have a lot of tabs open. There could be a lot more, let's face it. <laughs> Yeah, I can close some of these. This is really, sometimes, you know when you have so many tabs that it doesn't even show the title? Yes. It just shows like the little dots, the little like favicons. You have to click in each one to see, yeah. Here, I'm closing the tabs for all you. That, honestly, to me, that's a normal This amount. is a normal level it's of tabs. It's a very normal, it's a very low level um, of tabs. I would actually encourage everybody, there's a website I really <laughs> like called Tabs for a Cause, which every time you open a tab, it donates a small amount of money to a different charity. That's cool. Um, wow. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's just a, why not link your opening of a, of a tab to a good cause. Um, I don't know why this petrified wood isn't loading, so maybe in the meantime we'll find maybe another object cursed. here. It's cursed. Even the petrified, Even the picture. The petrified forest is. <laughs> um, okay, so we are, have that one we're going to play with. What does this remind us of? Let's see. Like a, a button or... Oh, a button's nice. Um, Maybe a CD. Oh, a CD! What is a CD? <laughs> What's a CD? I am not that... <laughs> I am not that old. I mean, young. <laughs> I am that old. That's my point. Um, sometimes I like to use the circle selection tool, but I also find it really cumbersome. For whatever reason, I can never, like, optically line up... Exactly. ...the shape that I'm trying to get, so I end up getting, like, a little close, but then it's, like, frustrating that it's not... If anyone has any tips on that, that I would take. So I sort of just try and eyeball it, and then I like keep doing this until eventually I just give up, and I use <laughs> the polyagonal tool. There you go. Um, but I'll try the, get rid of this guy. Do, do, do. Nope, it's gonna, you know what? Sometimes you just know what you like. Yeah. And I, I think I like the. If it, if it works, then why fix it? Um, yesterday, everybody said that I was very fast on Photoshop, and I'd love to prove them wrong. <laughs> Let's see. Going through. Do, 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 do. Just taking a little drive around the edge of this cookie. There you go. We only have a little bit of time left, too, so if you have any more questions for Elizabeth, make sure that you ask them. I will about take them. type, about design, about... Petrified wood. Petrified wood, <laughs> curses. <laughs> I listen to a lot of podcasts. All of the above. So, <laughs> apparently, I, I I definitely consider myself a bit of a um, 
fun fact enthusiast. So. I know. Do you have any um, design or art podcasts that you listen to? Oh, I love 99% Invisible, mm -hmm. which is a um, podcast about design from a sort of like, with the, I would call it with a lowercase d, in that it's not like high design, it's like sure. design of daily things. Um, and I also really appreciate that they talk about design of everything. I am cutting a circular shape with the polygon tool, and I wanna just say, Look how good it looks. It looks very, it's great. You wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even know. Um, so 99% uh, Invisible is not, is a great show and they talk about design um, from like a really wide range of things and the name of the show comes from the expression, good design is 99% Invisible, which yeah. is a nice uh, message, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Google got rid of the um, view image feature, but there is a Chrome plugin you can get that reinstalls it. <laughs> In case you want to be a contrarian like me. <laughs> so I'm just gonna like boop. So it's there you go. Wow, this. that's a beautiful CD. The colors. I miss CDs. CDs are right. I have really fond memories of being at the beach when I was a like very surly teenager. Um, and the one CD I had with me was uh, Panic at the Disco. Oh, Panic at the Disco. And I had a little Walkman. Yes. And I just grumpily sat while everyone else went in the ocean. And you can't do that anymore. No. Now you just look grumpy with an iPhone, which makes you seem... Antisocial. Yeah, yeah. like way less yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna have to come up with something else with this, or just find a different picture of Bark. I was trying to show an archive, but I feel like this petrified wood for some reason is like really not wanting to show itself. Um, so we're gonna just use Google. Yes, my design motto, someone said, is, well, it works. And that, well, is, works. that is how I've made my entire career. <laughs> but look at you. So it works. It works. And I, but hey, and I think that's true for everyone else here. Yes. Like, if it works for you, yes. believe it or not, I have a full-time job as a graphic designer doing yeah. this. And I am, in fact, considered one of the people in the office who is best at Photoshop. So, um, so there you go. Honestly, I think these dreams are so fun because you get to see that people do things in different ways and people do like quirky, weird things. Like every single person that comes in the stream is like, well, I know no one else does it like this, but this is how I do it. And it's fun. And then you like learn And in something. fact, some of the like weird ways I do it um, yeah. might be actually helpful for somebody. Absolutely. Maybe. Absolutely. Oh, this is kind of what I wanted in terms of being a similar look to that piece of candy. <laughs> Um, yes, that works great. So, my point is trust, trust your heart. <laughs> trust your. <laughs> I don't always do the polygon. It's just that that one had like a really pesky background mm -hmm. that I didn't want to mess with. So it was easier. Hey, I used the polygon for that um, cow yesterday. Oh, if you didn't watch yesterday's stream, you should watch the replay because there were some butter sculptures. So I took there, you on a journey. There, there was all sorts of things that you would never have imagined you'd see on Adobe Live, and it was amazing. Glad that'll be my legacy here. <laughs> the butter sculpture? Yeah. It's a cow on a motorcycle made out of butter. You have to see it. You have to watch. Look at that. So there it goes. Just as a nice, like, kind of... Stick? I am not left-handed, I'm, but I really wish I was left-handed because I think lefties are great. Um, my dad is a lefty and I've always been a little unused, but I'm glad I don't have to like smudge all of my yes. pages. Okay, so you see what I'm doing here. Just kind of a little, uh, it's a little compositional exploration. Okay, let's choose maybe one more. We have four minutes. Okay, can you do it? I can do it. I just have to figure out what looks like what. Mm. I do like the moon. The that moon you were is talking nice. About. Mm -hmm. What does that remind you of? It feels kind of Art Deco. Mm -hmm. um, here, because everyone's been hounding about it, I'm gonna. What is it? <laughs> select subject. Yes. How do you do that? Um. Oh gosh, I want to say you go to select. Select, but Tim will help us. Tim. Select. Oh, select right there. Select subject. Go up. Select uh, subject. Right under focus area. Right subject. there. Subject. <laughs> I clicked it. What now? There we go. Hey, yeah. not bad. Okay, so it's pretty good. 
But see, here's what I was saying, and I, I know I don't mean to like, <laughs> if you look at the edges of this, it's not, it, it's good, but I think you need to kind of like, you, refine it you definitely bit. need to refine a bit because yes. I think there are some things that like, even if technically it's right th to do this more wobbly, I want like a smoother line. Sure. Um, I'd also say the reason I'm using the um, polygonal um, select is that I'm on a, a trackpad. Yeah. If I was using a mouse, I would just draw it. Mm -hmm. Or if I was using a um, tablet, I would just draw it. But because I'm using like a, key, a little trackpad, it's so, I find it really hard to like draw yeah. a shape. It is, it's very hard. So it's easier for me to just use the, um, the polygonal feels like I have yeah. some control. Yeah, says that's where select and mask comes in. Yes, love to mask. I've been I've been a mask convert. I used to hate them, and now I use them on all the time. <laughs> and I think too, the select subject really works well when it's a very like yes. clean line that's a little bit more distinct from the background. Definitely. Um, whereas this is like fuzzier, so it's gonna be a little rougher. Yeah. Um, and I will say also another reason to use masks and everything. Again, like when I was in mm. school and doing all of the design stuff for myself, there was no one pushing me around. Um, but now you sometimes need to change stuff and you need to have old versions. So if you yeah. just like don't use the select, if you don't use a mask, you're gonna have to go back and like reselect it and yes. restart all over yes. and it ends up being really tedious. Yeah, it's a lot less destructive. Um, however, for some reason I've decided that I'm feeling lazy. So I'm just doing this as, um, I'm just copy pasting these in. But I still, ha I sometimes like to do that. I'll have like a masked layer. Yeah. And then I'll have just like a flat version just so I have one that's like um, easier to, yeah. to use. Okay, so here's our- Oh yeah, name. Tim is saying, so Tim does select subject and then select and mask, and then it's like a, wor a whole workspace. Mm, yes, very good for hair and stuff. Mm -hmm. Cause that's where even I am too lazy to actually go through and yeah. select all of it myself. Um, okay, what does this remind me of? We have Bark, we have a CD. Hmm. Um, it does feel kind of art deco to me. It does. How about, let's see if we can find like an oh, art deco hair clip? hair clip or something. These are all gonna be really, hmm. these are gonna be too fancy. If it reminds you guys of anything, let us know. Mm, maybe, maybe not a hair clip, maybe a ring. Oh, we're getting like old school stuff. Yeah. Um. I want like, I want the old stuff. <laughs> I always want the old stuff. Um, I would go back to here, but I feel like it's gonna be mad at me. Oh, um, much faster. So, oh, a rounded sofa. Flip ooh. Business. That's fun. So I have, um, oh, every, see, it thinks I'm in a new city, so it won't let me log into anything. Um, a rounded sofa, that's a good one. So I was gonna say Google, I mean, um, New York, Public Library actually has a ton of cool Art it's Deco. Mm -hmm. A Deco couch, mm -hmm. yeah. They have all this stuff um, that's also really nice, but I like it being an object, so maybe we'll do, who is an Art Deco? Um, Furniture designer? What's the name, Toulouse Lautrec? Toulouse Lautrec? Yeah. Right, that's the guy who is famous for making these like Art Nouveau, Art, yeah. art Nouveau kind of. Oh, it's true, we're not looking at Art Deco, we're looking at Art Nouveau. No, my art history. <laughs> um, like the, this is, we have only have 14 seconds left, so I don't think it's gonna happen, but I'm, I, I try. If we have time at the end, we can jump back <laughs> into it. Okay. okay, well, we'll have to just leave you not knowing what I paired this um, tiny pastry with. If we don't get back to it, maybe you can put it on your story or something yes. later. Okay, we are gonna hop over to Discord for a minute. Um, and look at some, um, some book covers. Amazing. Yes. Let's do it. I'm very excited. Yes. So, um, if you guys didn't get a chance to submit, you can still submit later. You can still get feedback. You can watch the replay, um, of Kathleen's demo if you missed it. Um, but let's see, here's one. How fun. So this is a song, not a book cover. <laughs> Is a song. Maybe it's a book too. It Maybe my book. Okay, yeah. might be a book. Um, I think this is great. I think this is so like perfect for what the word is. Mm -hmm. um, I I really love the way you've done the teeth. I would wonder if there's a way to make the fins type. It feels like you've done so Ooh. much with the type that like if the B kind of like yeah. Went I think up you could probably 
try and stretch it a bit. It just might be fun. It feels like you've done so, oh, sorry. It feels like you've done so much with everything else. It would be nice to feel like it was all type. Mm -hmm. um, I also think you could do away with the red border. I think the red blood is more than enough mm -hmm. um, and it distracts from what is really cool type. Um, I would look at the Suspiria poster from the 70s, reminds me a lot of this. Um, and that might be an interesting reference point for you because it has cool. like blood and big white type on a black background. So check that out too, if this is your style. Great, good job. Oh, here's it on, on an actual oh, book. Oh, fun. Very fun. It really looks better when it's on a real book. It really does. Love that. This is, I, I, Oh, that, that one reminds me a lot of, um, also, this is very Yes. <laughs> um, so funny, but I love this. Um, I think pulling down the H is really smart. I wonder if, um, I don't know, so I don't know these books, so it's obviously hard for me to weigh in on the, uh, the content, content yeah. um, but I see a little paw, which makes me wonder if this has something to do with animals in some mm, way. This little paw over here. Um, and, and I like, I really like the lettering for the door. It might be fun to do, like those H's, that stuff reminds me of like a dripping blood or maybe like mm -hmm. vampire teeth. It could be cool to, right now it feels very um, like formalist. It's sort of playing with the shape, but it could be interesting to, to try and play with it um, and maybe have that remind you of a certain object or a certain vibe. Um, and one more thing also that could be interesting is the N. You're lucky with this name that the H and the N are both quite mm -hmm. um, sort of easy to, mess with letters because they're not like unlike a maybe a o or something it's yeah maybe it could be cool to pull the n down so it matches the h so you have this like nice symmetry mm -hmm. so you can play with but yeah. i really love it and i think the windows are really lovely as well yeah yeah cool this is fun this is so fun i love that it matches so perfectly too with yes, what you were doing it's exactly like, so seamless this reminds me a bit of also the review from yesterday mm -hmm. because it feels like that type is using some of the like um, brush or like something. the handmade brush. Mm -hmm. I think it's really, it's nice how it mirrors the stained glass quality. Yeah. Um, in terms of composition also, I think it's interesting that the end, sorry, these are very far away, so I'm sort yeah, of like. Yeah, you can see it here too if you want to okay. get closer. It seems like it's really nice that the, um, the way that you've played with the N going into the L and then mirroring that shape with the G. I might have just play with spacing it a bit further from this shape. I think you mm -hmm. kind of lose the type a bit because it's such a lighter color compared mm -hmm. to this shape on the bottom that it, it creates a little bit of um, sort of tension that you might be able to avoid by just spacing that a bit more. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Ooh, love it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that these are all Halloween themed because I love spoopy stuff. Yes. Um, this is great, very drippy. Um, I appreciate that you have not just added those drips, but like really tweaked the letters mm -hmm. overall. Yeah, really like, like this like curve. They really here. have a sort of energy to it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's also really nice that you've kept the same hang line at top. So even though the bottom is kind of all different, you have this sort of consistent place where they're all falling from, which gives it a nice, still makes it readable and doesn't detract from it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've, I don't have any advice on this one. I love it. It's amazing, yeah. Um, it's hard for me to see exactly what's happening in the image. I think it's a witch and <laughs> next to a lighthouse, perhaps. Seems like it. Um, the cool witch. Yeah. All about it. Very fun. You need to put the uh, author on there there. That's, yes. my, that's my only criticism. There Just there throw an author on there. Fun. Great. I, Ew. I, I feel like there's a lot of drips happening here. Um, which is lovely. I like the way that the eye is dripping. Yeah. Um, this could be another one where it would be interesting to play with the alignment. Right now, the lettering is really lovely, but it's in sort of just the center of the page and mm -hmm. the blood doesn't, <laughs> the blood doesn't necessarily add to it. Um, <laughs> maybe if you play with, for example, I think it's something really beautiful about like a really black page with just a little bit of a pop of red. So mm -hmm. if you maybe made that text go a bit further up mm -hmm. and had the blood really like draw your eye to it. So maybe it's all sort of focused in the top or the misery is at the top, but the blood is at the bottom. Anything that would sort of help you move your eye through the page. Cause right yeah. now the Stephen King kind of gets lost mm -hmm. and you see that type, but then you're sort of don't really have anywhere else to look. So spreading it out might help with that. Yeah. That eye kind of looks like a candle to me, like mm, a candle dripping yes, or something. Yes, totally. Kind of I love cool. that. Could be interesting to play with color too. Yeah. Um, to play with that eye being a different color. Dope, very dope. 
Um, I like that you've approached two different styles for the stay and the dope, mm -hmm. um, and the line going through is fun. I'm very interested in the way that you've done this E. It actually feels quite Art Deco to me, yeah. um, all those letters, um, to sort of remove the fill um, or the counter circles, um, so you just sort of have the shape. I think the stay is nice. It's interesting to me that you've latched the S and the Y onto the letters, but not the T and the A. Might be interesting to see um, how it works if you brought the T and the A as well down, or mm -hmm. just like sort of a little more um, consistency between how those two words interact with each other. Yeah. And, and same as with the last one, um, could be interesting to move it towards the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, and misery, I would guess, is a courier typeface. Just saying. So oh, someone asked what typeface is used in the misery. last one we looked at, and it looks similar to courier to me. Cool. Um, I don't, is this the same challenge? I think this might have been from yesterday. Oh, challenge four. Yes. Okay. Cool. Well. Here's this one. Oh, amazing. I love that. Yes. I, I appreciate that so many people are doing a different take on this misery one because mm -hmm. it's fun to see all the ways that people are interpreting it. So like one of them used the courier, which had these serifs and made it really drippy. This one's a lot more sort of sharp and pointy. Yeah. Um, it's fun. I like I, these little splotches here too. It's window. fun how this reminds me a bit of the angle of the light coming through that window. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it would be interesting to push that a bit further. So take that whole like block of lettering and like tilt it angle a bit. It, yeah. So it really feels like it's maybe like coming out of that mm. um, light a bit because it's so close to where that light is that if you just scoot it up a little bit, it could feel maybe a bit more part of that overall composition. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, this one also reminds me a bit of what we were talking about yesterday yes. with the brush, mm -hmm. which is really lovely. I can't even, this, the brush is really cool. It feels like spider webs almost, or like ghost trails. Yeah. Um, and I actually really <laughs> like the pairing with the Justin Cronin. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I can't tell is there's a, sometimes I think with design, it's nice to think about um, what is intentional and what looks accidental. And right now, you're sort of in this mid space where it's not clear if you're trying to track all four words sort of evenly across the page, or if you're playing with like, just sort of um, having them be grouped as two and two. Mm -hmm. So I might say, if you are interested in having it be sort of like four lines of text on one page, it might be nice to really have that spread. So passage is at the bottom, or maybe reduce the lighting a bit. So the mm -hmm. Justin Cronin is like a bit tighter, and then the passage gets to sort of have yeah. a moment to shine, because it's right now a little bit in the middle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, amazing. Is this yeah. the same one as I the think one? This is, I was gonna yeah. say, I was like, this looks familiar. Has this other little color? But I love the back, the, the blood back. Oh, the back, yeah. Okay. Classic, love to play with a big, a big O. Oh. It's good, <laughs> we, can crit love. we can critique it while it loads. Yeah. Um, great, big O. I like mm -hmm. how that sort of cuts into the form of um, Osho himself. I think this is, this is from that, Netflix documentary. Oh, is it? Um, that I'm forgetting the name of, but about the cult. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> um, oh, I love this one, the one above it. I think this is the one that Kathleen was playing around with. Oh, go Kathleen. I think. Maybe? Maybe? Oh, yes, I think this is Kathleen. Yeah. Kathleen. Kathleen. This reminds me a lot of, I don't know if anyone's familiar with the Type Foundry House Industries. Um, but House Industries is a type foundry that makes mm -hmm. a lot of sort of like quirky 1950s inspired typography. Um, and specifically, uh, they also have a really big type lettering catalog or um, what is it called? Photo lettering catalog, which is before digital type. People mm. used to use, you'd have to sort of send away to get people to typeset stuff for you. Um, and they have the catalog of all the stuff people used to use for that, which cool. includes like really weird, chunky stuff. Yeah. Um, really fun. Same in kind of fits into the area that we've been talking about with like 70s, yeah. slightly retro feeling type. Cool. Yeah. I think that's it. These are from yesterday. So, all right. Thanks guys for submitting. Um, there will be another daily creative challenge um, focused on Photoshop in the morning and then one on XD right after this. So Amazing. make sure you stay more tuned. More challenges. Yes. Cool. Well, we have just a couple more minutes, maybe about 15 minutes if you want to. Yeah, you want to try and find your couch. Sure. And I was also, pu I pulled up this Suspiria thing to show you all. I'm a big fan of horror movies. Um, this has now been, you know, remade. Um, and the remake is also, I think, quite good. But this is a great, I think this is such a great 
Um, That's really fun. Cover. Yes. My dad says hi. Thanks, Dad. Aww. <laughs> um, hi, Dad. Uh, shout out to my dad who figured out how to make a Behance account. Yes. To do this, considering he does not own a cell phone, I find that especially impressive. That is so, very impressive. I think that's called fatherly love. It's how much he loves yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, this was a great poster, I think, and, and I think is actually a really great inspiration for what we're talking about mm -hmm. um, in the way that it has these um, kind of like skewed letters, they're playing with the composition, you know, they have type up at top. Um, it really brings your eye down the whole page, which is really fun. Yeah, very well done. Um, they have a lot, also this, this movie has been remade a bunch of times, <laughs> such that you can sort of see a lot of these have that kind of quality of, of playing yeah. with shape. Um, cool, so yeah, also watch The Spirit, it's a great movie. Yeah. Okay, so here we were. We were trying to come up with a oh, yeah, pairing for this, Art and I'm couch. really struggling to find one. It's okay. <laughs> but we will do it. We will find it. Um, we're going to do Art Nouveau ob Object? Objects and Artifacts. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, maybe one of these, like, vases uh -huh. could work. Um, let's see. Okay. This one's kind of fun. That is very fun. Does that, I don't know, do you think that has like any, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna Photoshop it out, I'm just gonna pair it. Has has some some energy. It's rounded. I, I'd say let's just do it for the sake of. I'd say let's go. You know. I think it's fun. Moving forward. If you guys have any last questions for Elizabeth, make yes, sure please. you answer that, or ask them so she can answer. I'm not back live. tomorrow, so. She's not back tomorrow, it's your last chance. I have to go back to my job. Yes. My other Sadly. job. But maybe you'll come back. I would love to come back if, yes. if you all want me to come back. Absolutely. Um, and make sure you follow her on Instagram too, Elizabeth underscore Goodspeed. You can see. Yeah, it's actually here. I'll, I'll pull just for a forward. second. Um, I was going to say, if you like this archiving stuff, yes. um, I have a tag that I use that you're all welcome to participate <laughs> in, which is Casual Archivist, because I think you should be a little more flexible about what is considered archiving. So I just post any cool old things that I find, whether that's typography so um, or, you know, photography, good, interesting covers. Mm -hmm. um, so this was from the Sainsbury archive that I we looked at that. yesterday. <laughs> um, this is from an Avon archive. So lots and lots of interesting stuff. I love for people to contribute because I just think there's so much cool stuff out there mm -hmm. and it's really inspiring to get to see what other people have made and. And occasionally I'll make work out of it, you know, and it's fun to sort of just have that yeah, um, narrative absolutely. going through. So definitely please contribute to that if yes. you have stuff you Use find. Use the hashtag, follow Elizabeth. Casual archivist. That's me. <laughs> um, the less and less casual these days, now that I have like, you know, a hundred books, yeah. you know, per room in my house. <laughs> I really, I, I sometimes think like, some people are like, wow, I can't wait to, you know, own a house. I'm like, I can't wait to own more bookshelves. Yeah. The small things. Um, yeah, and sometimes I use this polygonal one as like a, to, to contrast. I'll use both because it's too hard to use just one. Um, I'm contracting. I always tend to contract my, um, mm -hmm. oh, this is a pretty small image, maybe it only needs one, but it just, I feel like it makes it less fuzzy. But you can also smooth it a little. Um, nope, wrong way. Yes, Mexico 68 branding was like one of the best <laughs> brandings I've ever seen. Um, and very famously amazing. Okay, we're gonna go in here now, delete everything else. Um, then we're gonna save this as deco lamp. Is this a lamp? No, it's a vase. Yes. Okay, all of these are very <laughs> um, interpretive. It could be a base of a lamp. It, could, it definitely easily. could be. Oh, I, I think I uh, cut, <laughs> you cut know, a little off there. That's okay. For for today, I think for it's now. okay. I've hopefully proven that I do know how to use Photoshop okay. in the course of this four hours spent with you all. Yes. Um, <laughs> and you can always turn stuff here. I always forget if, if anyone has any trips, I always forget. Um, yes, I did. Thank you, Tim, for pointing out that I did chop <laughs> off the right part. I just said it. I know. Like, he's really just, every time I do something, I feel like Tim's like, here's a way you could do it better. <laughs> Tim just has so many useful tips. 
Um, Tips and tricks. For you, Tim, week. I'm gonna go and knock it. I will bring back the right side of this, there you go. Of this vase. There you go. Just so I don't embarrass myself. <laughs> I thought I could let it slide. Apparently. You can't get away with anything here. Apparently, no. It's, Even. Oh, Tim says, so sorry, stream delay. No, that is okay. true. <laughs> Oh, that's good. I was like, I just said that I chucked it off. I know, I saw it. <laughs> Were you even listening? Um, let's see, here we go. Ta-da, it's still there very fuzzy. Go. Normally I would try and make this nicer, but. Um, it's just for you. It's just for me. And it's all just of for you. us. For all of us. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I really like this kind of thing. Like, it almost reminds me of um, old children's books. Like, uh -huh. I think it's really fun sometimes to think of objects from a more sort of formalist perspective. Um, and not really, like, just sort of, it's almost like being back in art school, right? Like, yeah. playing with shapes and just like, okay, for example, you know what this reminds you of? A tuxedo. Oh my gosh, you're so right. <laughs> How cute is that? Um, and again, I'm doing a really, like, in the interest of just trying to get a lot of stuff done, I'm doing these in a really, really yes, quick way. Yes, Art Nouveau, Samuel says, it's Art Nouveau, not Art Deco. Yes, it was. We got it. It was Art Nouveau, <laughs> I did say that out loud, I would yes. like credit. And before that was the arts and crafts movement. Yes. I know art history, I promise. Um, let's see. Let's see go. Samuel Leeds has very strong feelings about um, <laughs> Art Nouveau. I get it. Art Nouveau gets um, eclipsed by Art Deco. It really does. And there's some beautiful, beautiful pieces. Actually, this does kind of remind me of like a what is, you know, the tuxedos that have the like, like the, frilly? the frilly stuff? What is that from? The 70s? I don't Probably, know. Probably, maybe. 70s tuxedo? If you search frilly tux... Oh, yes, that's, yeah. that's what I'm yes. thinking about here. That is incredible. Look at that. Wow. It's called graphic design. <laughs> just, little, just some little pairings here. I'm not even gonna bother to cut that one out. I don't think it needs it. I think it needs to live in all its glory on this weird blue mannequin. A cummerbund, yes. A cummerbund. Oh Thank no, I think you. a cummerbund is the thing that goes below. But is, oh wait, that's what goes below? That's not this piece No, right that's, here? What is a cummerbund this is like, oh, I can't spell that. A cummerbund is this thing that like. Austin Powers signature text, yes. Oh, that's a cummerbund. Yeah, a cummerbund is like a corset for a man. Oh. I think what's, there's like a flap that's here sometimes, in like the old ones. I don't know. I don't I know. I know an ascot is like a necktie. Mm -hmm. You know, this is like really. A scarf. I appreciate this level of precision. In We're this. getting way too into tuxedo details now. Um, I, I'm a strong believer that everything is graphic design if you want it to be. Absolutely. So we have our nice little. Cover bun, that's a British actor. Yes. <laughs> so we have a nice little four up pairing here. Uh, just just playing. A placket? Oh, is that what it's called? I don't a know. A placket. Hmm. Learning, learning all the new things. New stuff. New things we didn't need to so know. So this is a, we we made something here. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, for the time that you had, is I think you did great. You guys great. did okay? Yes. I, I appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, and maybe we'll just. Oh, fun. Repeating type is like very new right now. I mean, very in right now, I think. Yeah. I also really like to do this um, align tool where mm -hmm. you can do like distribute spacing. Yes, it's wonderful. Sh chef's kiss. Um, there you go, food. Food, food, food. Also, originally we were looking at an Ed Ruscha, so he does it more like this, which is also nice. I love that too. It's beautiful. Um, okay, well, I think so we have time. We have about five minutes. Okay, I'm gonna try and do one more. Okay. Let's see what we have. You are speedy. It's my last name. It's true. <laughs> That's true. Um, Genoese fancies, mm. punch fancies, Russian sandwiches. Wow, that is a sweet sandwich. It is a sweet sandwich. Um, I wanna try something different. I wanna just really push the uh, edge of my time here. Okay, let's <laughs> do it. <laughs> Um, I saw this thing on one of the references I had that I really loved, which was um, Stu Studio Claude. Um, and I thought it was really cool the way that they made a border yes. out of the images. I thought that was really fun. That's very fun. So Let's I wanted it. to try that. And I didn't really have enough time, but I'm gonna try it anyways with one of our photos. Um, maybe this lady. Oh yeah, she's great, look at that. She's 
the ultimate bake sale right there. There's a lot of jello happening there. Yes. A lot of bananas. Um, I know there is, I always forget to use it. What is it, step and repeat? Uh-huh. The reason I get annoyed is, well, okay, so step and repeat, you say, what, I want like five in a row, and you can add a little bit of offset. Mm -hmm. I don't want any vertical, I just want horizontal. Maybe a little less than that. Nope, not. Mm. <laughs> um, zero. 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 No, oh, see? Oh, it has to be the width of the thing, I see. There you go. That's there what I wanted. There you go. Um, so make that, and then I'm gonna just, my margins are too big for this, so I'm gonna make them much smaller. Um, my favorite process to come up with creative ideas, also hello to my younger sister who is, Aww. wow, this is like my, my, my roommates on here. This, yes. I feel very loved and supported. As um, you should. Uh, my favorite way to come up with creative process is just looking at a ton of stuff. I really, and when I keep saying like, I love archiving, I really just think anytime I'm not sure what to do, I just look at what other people have done for the last 200 years, mm -hmm. um, and there's always something great to find. Um, it's really, like, we're so lucky to live in an era where there's just, yes. like, a wealth of information. Yes. Um, that there's sort of no um, way to not find something that's gonna be inspiring to you. Um, you just have to maybe take a little bit of time to look and be flexible, and, and I also am a big fan of saving things that are inspiring to you as you find them. Mm -hmm. If you wait till you need to do a project to do all of your mood boarding and research, you're gonna feel very rushed. Yeah. If you have um, sort of a running pool of stuff that you're excited about, it's a lot easier. Like, as you see, I just have this folder of stuff that I'm messing with. Um, I don't have to necessarily find something from scratch every time. Yeah. It means I can just sort of like open that folder, look around, and something will hopefully come to me. Yeah. Um, that's really great advice. I think it's a good way to do it. It's kind of fun. It's very fun. And then I think I I'll love it. Put a different dessert in the middle. Okay. Um. Ooh, pies. There you go. Along with the bake sale theme. Yeah, it's it's this is our um, <laughs> long-awaited dessert page. Um, and I actually think what makes this fun. There's a bit too much contrast for me right now, so I'm gonna. I usually just do that, but I know there is a black and white tool which can be helpful because you can play with mm -hmm. like actually making sure things don't look too, you can just add a little more contrast. Whereas if you just desaturate, you lose sort of all of that. You can make it flat sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. How fancy is that? Okay, so here's my black and white pie. <laughs> um, yeah, Pinterest is good. I, I think the problem with Pinterest I find is because it's all sorted by an algorithm, if you like one thing, it's really hard to get out of a hole. It just shows you more you save of the same one recipe, and then yeah, it shows forever. you more of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like you pull, you're like, oh, I love this thing with bright colors, and then yeah. it'll send you a hundred things with bright colors. And sometimes you want to look at something with bright colors, and then look at something um, really muted. Yeah. So I think it's nice. That's why I'm a really big advocate for sort of creating your own, and and that's also what I like about Arena. It's not mm -hmm. sorted by, um, peop I mean, it's not sorted by an algorithm. It's really sorted by people. Mm -hmm. So you end up with a lot more stuff that's. Um, just uh, easier to sort of play from. Um, I also really like one thing about Arena that's fun is they have a um, find source. Oh, that's great. And it'll great. automatically either send you to the source or it'll, um, oh, here it's find original. It automatically does a reverse image search on Google for you. Wow. With that image. That's very handy. Which is good because I find that um, in uh, Pinterest, sometimes you like something on Pinterest and then it links you to something else on Pinterest and yeah. you can never find the original source. Yes, Pinterest is tough for yeah. finding the originals. So it's good to, to yeah. be able to sort of actually have stuff link you to mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. real source um, and at least attempt to have credit for those lovely yes. people who made your original thing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, amazing. Okay, so there's our nice little How like- fun. Our little um, food grid, which is I think quite fun. I love it. Um, oh no, it's true, you're right. Uh, Pinterest is, I still use Pinterest occasionally to save stuff. It's just good to yes. good to have a wide variety of tools. Absolutely, so many tools, all different purposes. Yeah, amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for joining thank us. Thank you, I had a lot of fun. Yes, go follow Elizabeth, um, Elizabeth underscore Goodspeed on Instagram. Say hi and make sure you stick around. There's gonna be an XD um, Daily Creative Challenge and then an XD stream and it's gonna be really great. So thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you.